call to order the Douglasville City Council Legislative Work Session for tonight, which is Thursday, November the 2nd, 2023. Our invocation will be done by our own Emily Hardaway, um, our community outreach coordinator for the city of Douglasville. And after that, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance, which will be led by the Mayor Pro Tem, City Council Member Terry Miller. Please stand for the invocation. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for this day that you have given us. Thank you for this opportunity to gather together. As we enter into a period of thanksgiving, we are thankful for all that you have given us. I ask that you be with our mayor and council this evening as they conduct city business. I pray you will grant them wisdom and discernment as they seek to make decisions for our city. Thank you for all the blessings you bestow upon us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Pledge allegiance. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, for leading us in the pledge. And Ms. Emily, we appreciate you um, giving us that beautiful invocation. I'd like to welcome you to the Douglasville City Council Legislative Work Session. My name's Rochelle Robinson. I'm mayor of the city of Douglasville. This is a work session where agendas, items will be discussed tonight. And uh, just for discussion, the vote will not take place on these items until next Monday at our 6 o'clock regular voting meeting. If the business you're here for is not listed as an agenda item, there will be ample time under the agenda items, comments from citizens and delegates for you to discuss your business with us. I'll just go over a few protocol items and then we'll get into the meat of the meeting. Um, I'd like to make you aware of some of the rules and we'll just um, follow the rules and continue to move the, the meeting forward. I'd ask that you please keep your comments and presentations on a professional level, dealing with the facts that are important for this governing body to make our decisions. We will not accept comments that are considered by the chair to be of a personal attack on any individual or group of individuals. You will receive a warning from the chair if you uh, make that uh, comment, if you cross a line and it's a personal attack. If you deviate from that requirement, a second deviation will result in a um, you not continuing to speak as we'll turn your microphone off. Um, only one person speaking at a time. Please do not applaud or react to speakers or speak from the audience, cheer, or carry on a conversation while you're at the microphone. I'll remind you that we're only required to accept public comments during the required public hearings. And um, if you have any materials that you'd like to present to us, we ask that you would give those materials to our city clerk, Ms. Vicki Acker, to my right. She'll make copies and disseminate to myself and council members. If you have a cell phone or electronic device, we ask that you would please put those in silent mode or turn those off until after the meeting so they will not be disruptive. Um, and this is how the agenda items will go. The committee chairperson will read the agenda item, then that person representing that agenda item or applicant will make his or her presentation. You'll come to the microphone, give us your name and address for the record, and do your presentation. Myself and council members will possibly ask clarifying questions to help us uh, to make a determination for next Monday. After that, the committee chairperson will ask for comments or statements from the audience. There is a maximum of 20 minutes for those in favor of an item and 20 minutes for those in opposition, and each person has five minutes to speak. Prior to coming to the podium, um, there are some blue cards outside on the desk. We ask that you would fill those cards out, and then you can bring that card forward and hand it to our city clerk, and so that we'll have your name um, and your information for the record. And again, when you come to the podium, give us your name and address for the record, and then you have five minutes to talk to us. Um, each person only has one opportunity, and this is not a question and answer format or debate as far as giving um, um, information from the citizens and delegates. We're just here to hear the information, deliberate, and make our decision, help us to make our decision on Monday. So that's a lot of information. Hopefully we're all on the same page. Uh, we do have agendas. The agendas, if you'd like a paper agenda, it's outside on the desk. If you want to follow us on the screen um, for the electronic um, agenda, you can certainly do that as well. So now we'll move on with the agenda the way it is printed. And we did have an addition, so um, under personnel, and hopefully that has been added. 
So we do have some announcements and presentations. We have an announcement by myself to present a proclamation to Mr. and Mrs. Stone um, of the Douglas County Retired Educators Association, declaring Sunday, November the 5th, as Retired Education Day in the city of Douglasville. So I will read this um, proclamation declaring November 5th, 2023, as Retired Educators Day, and we'll have um, He's not in Rotary, but that's my Kiwana brother to come up and receive this, uh, our proclamation. It says, Office of the Mayor Rochelle Robinson, Douglasville, Georgia, proclamation, declaring November 5th, 2023 as Retired Educators Day, whereas the governor of the state of Georgia has proclaimed that uh, Sunday, November 5th, 2023 as Retired Educators Day in Georgia and whereas the Georgia Retired Educators Association was founded in 1958 to unite retired educators in Georgia for fellowship, support, education, community services, and to improve the benefits for all retired educators through cooperation with local, state, and national organizations. And whereas there are more than 1,402 retired teachers in Georgia, 32,000 of whom are members of the Georgia Retired Educators Association. And whereas the retired educators of Georgia donate thousands of hours of volunteer service and make invaluable contributions to the welfare of the Douglasville community. Whereas it is appropriate that a day be designated for citizens to express their appreciation for the contributions that retired educators have made and continue to make for the Douglasville community. Now, therefore, I, Rochelle Robinson, Mayor of the City of Douglasville, do hereby proclaim November 5th, 2023, as Retired Educators Day and further extend appreciation to all retired educators in the city of Douglasville for their impact to our students, I mean to our citizens, uh, we just have students here. So proclaim this second day of November 2023 on behalf of the mayor and this Douglasville City Council. Let's give the educators, retired educators a hand. Mr. and Mrs. Stone, you want to come forward and say anything? And if you have some retired educators with you, they, oh, you have a representative. And I'm going to tell you a real quick story while you're coming. I still remember my fourth grade teacher, Mrs. Mark. She was so wonderful. This is going to tell you my age. So we would come to class every day. I'm, I'm in Ohio. And it was snowing this one time in the winter. We had to put our hats and coats and all this in the cubby. And she would play every day, Stevie Wonder, you are the sunshine of my life. And so she played that record and she came by and she tapped on all of us and said, you're the sunshine of my life. And she would hug us and she was so sweet. I always remember Mrs. Mark. So when I became mayor, I had to go back and they installed me in the Hall of Fame for my high school and I spoke at the university. And do you know Mrs. Mark was in the audience? And I was so happy, I'm getting ready to, I was so proud and I couldn't believe that she still supported me. So she was such a, a wonderful person. So you don't know the differences that you make in uh, children's lives. And we appreciate that even after you're retired, because I know she wasn't still teaching, but she still supported students. And I know that you all do that as well and you give back to the community. So help, thank, you help to help make this a better community, and we thank you so very much. Would you like to say anything? I've been talking a long time. A little bit. Thank you very much. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, my name is Don Chalfont, by the way. I'm mm -hmm. uh, the president of the retired teachers here in Douglas County. Okay. Uh, I wish to thank all members of the Douglasville City Council uh, for setting aside this coming day, uh, <laughs> November 5th, 2023 in appreciation of all the many retired teachers. Mm -hmm. Some years ago when I was a student, I thought many times that the last thing I would do would <laughs> to be a teacher. And I was right. It was the last thing I did, at least uh, career-wise. Yes, sir. And one of the duties I did as a teacher was to monitor hallways between classes. Thus, say, what are you carrying in that book bag? <laughs> I don't know, but my teacher said it was my future. <laughs> well, then move along. <laughs> we teachers also moved along. So here we are now, still monitoring the pathways of our society for a better world. Yes, sir. 
Thank you for recognizing our efforts with this proclamation. <laughs> Thank you so much. Let's give our retired teachers and educators a hand. <laughs> So we have two educators that are um, sitting on the city council, and I was actually a substitute teacher. I had fun in elementary school and high school. Middle school, I came home and said, I can't do this anymore. But so we'll have um, our educators and any other council members that would like to speak um, to say something. And we'll start with our chief educator on the, on the corner, Mr. Chris Watts. Coach Watts, would you like to say anything as a retired educator for Douglas County? There's nothing like being retired, and I'm going to tell you that right <laughs> now. <laughs> I enjoyed my 37 years, but I appreciate y'all. Thank uh, you. I'm not so certain I'm not, I haven't been more busy retired than I was <laughs> when I was working. That's true. That's true. I'm looking at my calendar right now, and it's as full as it ever was. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. Thank y'all. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you. Thank you, Coach. And we have someone who would bring those students and hand them to you with a bow on, <laughs> uh, Councilman Adams. He used to drive the school buses, so he had lots of patience. Councilman Adams, do you have anything? <laughs> That's the second time tonight you brought I up know. me driving a school Tell bus, Mayor. Uh, I'm surprised I was able to leave under my own accord when I got ready to <laughs> rather than being fired. But uh, again, we appreciate all that you all do. I know there's probably 150 years worth of experience standing there before us. If not more, we won't tell anyone's age or how long you talk, but we know you, you're greatly appreciated and, uh, and we just want you to know it once again. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Oh, thank you. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, you have two mm -hmm. children to go through the school system in mm -hmm. Douglas County, and your wife they was an educator. Out. Neither and is in prison, so I'm very that's proud right, of that. That's right. That's um, right. No, they, and my wife was a, a lifelong College educator at the prison. University of mm -hmm. West Georgia. Um, I actually had the privilege of teaching a couple of design classes at West Georgia. Um, at the, at, at, and at that collegiate level, you think things are a little more laid back, but <laughs> I, I, the stress <laughs> and tension, I can. <laughs> my hat is, is off to you for what you had to. To, to work through you know all those years uh, mm -hmm. you know there's, there's there's tremendous rewards and tremendous stress but it, it's all worth it in the end I know that but thank, thank you. you for what you've done thank you, thank you Mr. Mayor Pell Tim <laughs> Dr. Bardelli I'm going to let you go last because yes, you have a PhD in, in education <laughs> so you can say what you want to say um, Councilman Davis you would like would you like to no, say just anything? congratulations to you thank you thank you Councilman Estes uh, the same as everyone else thank you for all that you have done uh, it's an very valuable uh, job that you all do, and we really appreciate it. Thank you, Councilman Nessus. Mm -hmm. Dr. Bordanley. Wow. Thank you, Madam problem. Mayor. Yes, Thank you to all of you for paving the way for those of us that are still in education. <laughs> um, I work with high school students, and it is, it, I don't look at it like it's a job. It's, it's really a, um, a passion and a ministry. So for, to see you still doing what you do, um, all of you are cloned. I see you everywhere, everywhere, <laughs> um, except for in our school every day. So anytime you want to come and, and um, teach again, you're <laughs> welcome to. But congratulations and thank you, what you for what mm -hmm. you do. And I know that um, I don't teach a classroom in a classroom, but I do work with our five high schools. And I know that at any given time, if I ever needed advice, I can call on any one of you. And thank mm -hmm. you for what you do. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you so much for what you all have done and all this 150 years of experience that you bring to the table. So we're going to give you another hand and we'll have you take pictures. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So let's give them another hand. Thank you so much. Thank you. Councilman Watts, if you could scoot this way, just a t just a tat. There you go. Um, Councilman Miller, if you could lean more towards that way, and then if you could just move just a little bit. Okay, there we go. All right, on the count of three, one, two, three. I'm going to take another one on the count of three, one, two, three, and then one more on the count of three. One, two, three. And then I have another phone. I was asked to take a picture. All right, on the count of three. One, two, 
on the count of three, one, two, three. All right, there you go. Thank you. Mr. Stone want me to say that Mr. Charles Thomas was a Douglas County High School graduate, the Tiger, so he just made, wanted to make certain that we knew that you were in the audience. So we're always happy to see him. Thank you, Mr. Stone. You want to give a shout out. So thank you. Uh, so we'll move on. We do have another recognition, and it's of our um, esteemed city manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton, for the city of Douglasville to acknowledge um, her receiving the 2023 Pillar of Excellence Award from the Georgia City County Managers Association. And I asked her, to, she didn't say that she wanted to do this herself. I asked her to come and to share with us about this. And I just saw someone, city manager, and they said, how many people, how many women in all this time? I think, so give us those statistics. I think it's only two women that's I'm ever the second received woman. this. Yes, ma'am. 21 out of 74 years of the organization. So 21. Um, awardees for this award. Aww. Well, Chelsea accused me when they gave it to me of putting my fingerprints all over it, so I didn't put my fingerprints on it this time. Well, um, I will share with you all that I was surprised. So um, <laughs> last week at the Georgia City County Management Association, um, they did give me the Pillar of Excellence Award. Um, Georgia City County Managers Association has been um, in existence for over 70 years, and they don't give out the Pillars of Excellence Award um, often. They just give it periodically when they feel as though there's someone who um, they deem is worthy of the award. So um, I am number 21, and I am the <laughs> second uh, female to receive it. If you look at the list, I think, Bill, there are a couple people who may not even be alive yet on, on alive anymore on the list, and I know that there are several who are retired. So um, I did joke and with them and say, you know, are you all trying to say something? Because I feel like I'm a little bit too young to receive the award as of yet. Um, but I, it is a privilege to receive the award um, for several reasons. Um, again, um, this is amongst your peers. I think the mayor said earlier, um, as it states right now, there are 539 cities in the state of Georgia. Not all have a city manager, and there are 159 counties, and not all have a, um, a manager. And not all are a member of the association, but a great deal are. So it's, it's an award that's selected by our peers. Um, and just really to share a quick story, um, probably about 14, 15 years ago, and I'll ask Bill to come on up. Bill, come on up. Um, mm -hmm. Bill said to me, Bill encouraged me to join the association. Come on, Mr. Osborne. Um, come on. He encouraged me to join the association, and we were sitting there, and I was still a department head at the time. Um, and he said, you're going to be president of this, this association one day. And I was like, okay, well, I don't know how that's going to be because, <laughs> first of all, I think I'm the youngest person in this room by about 40 years, and this room is filled <laughs> with older white males, and I know that they think I'm your secretary. They are not assuming that I am uh, an employee of yours. And it just was the, the environment. There was nothing. I w the environment was extremely welcoming, but the environment did not look the way that I looked. And so um, Bill was correct. One day I did become president of the mm -hmm. association. And one of the things that I've always tried to encourage to do was to make certain that the association was inclusive and not just because inclusive through race or gender, but also with age. So I think that um, Chelsea can testify to the fact that when you walk into that association, that association now is younger. That association is active. 
Um, that association is about what it means to be a professional in local government. Um, I'm proud to say that I was the, I have hired the first executive director for the association. It didn't have one, so I was able to do that. So I am proud of the things that I've been able to do, not just for the association, but I can tell you every single time that I go out of town, I don't care what it's for, there is something that I've taken from those interactions, those relationships, and those meetings, and I have implemented here in Douglasville. And hopefully you all and the citizens and the community feel as though I have made this place better. And so that's always been my goal. Um, Bill picked me up out of few employees, and he didn't have to look at me and choose me. He didn't, but he did. So I'm always grateful for him to do that. Good, good choice. You know, Thank we'll you. clarify one thing she said. I did tell her that <laughs> If she would get involved in the association, she would become its president. Mm -hmm. uh, I specified that she would become its president in five years. When mm. did you become the president? Uh, in three. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, city manager, I'm just going to read and former city. You were my city manager before, Mr. Osborne. <laughs> so I'm going to read just a couple of these, and then we'll come around and take a photo with you. And But we'll have council members, if they'd like to say anything, to say anything. So the criteria says champion uh, professional local government and management d demonstrates sustainability, a commitment to personal and professional development through training and education, mentors, coaches, councils, peers, new managers, prospective managers, and colleagues, demonstrates a commitment to innovation and professional local government, exemplifies the tenets of ethics um, during trialing, trying times, difficulty, or hardships in cities and counties. Um, professional local government management helps local governments professionally through provision of promoting training, uh, provides valuable assistance to managers to enable implementation of more than innovative programs. But the one that is most um, impressive to me in all these things, it says, exemplifies high ethical standards, which are in harmony with the spirit of ICMA and their code of ethics. So thank you, city manager, for being um, who you are all the time and being professional and staying with the city of Douglasville and representing us so so well. We're so very proud of you, and we thank you um, for just being who you are and, and making Douglasville one of the best cities in the country, I'll say. So thank you so much for that, and we appreciate you. I'll open the floor. Anyone want to say yes, sir, Councilman Adams? He was, he was I eager, don't mind. So. I don't mind going first here. Okay, Madam yes, Madam, sir. Let me tell you. Um, I'll call you Marsha at the moment, oh, Marsha, if that's okay, yeah. Madam City Manager. Um, I know that uh, I've been involved 12 years in our city, and I have. I was there when came in when Mr. Bill Osborne was our city manager and brought you on as the first assistant city manager. And mm -hmm. now I think we have takes three or four to run it. But regardless of that, uh, you have exemplified the most professionalism and the, 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 the most fair attitude of anyone I've ever worked around. And I just want you to know how much I appreciate you personally. But I know that the city is in good hands because of what mm -hmm. Mr. Uh, Osborne saw in you and, and placed you in that position and helped you to, to get there. Um, to have a little fun with it, I also remember um, Mr. Osborne saying that it was pretty difficult sometimes to herd cats <laughs> and uh, that uh, that was one of the major jobs that you had. And, and I think he was referring to these cats. <laughs> and so she has done a tremendous job in keeping us out of trouble, making yes. us look good, mm -hmm. helping us not to make mistakes. And uh, I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. You've not done it alone, I know. And, and I know there's a room full of staff here that mm -hmm. are to be commended also. And uh, I'm just thankful that uh, our city is in your hands. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Councilman Adams, Mayor Pro Tem. I'm going to play volleyball. I, 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 my story is that, I, you know, Mar Marshall's heard this a thousand times, and she and I came into the city at the same time, around 2005, was it? I think mm -hmm. it was. Well, she came earlier before. than that, Mayor Pro Tem. Four, maybe, <laughs> you were the <laughs> main, <laughs> mainstream manager. Yeah, we'll come and sit in your office. Jurassic period. In the <laughs> Jurassic period. Earlier than that. And, and, and I was uh, on the uh, Downtown Development Authority. And, Absolutely. and I, I'm never qu I've never been quite as good a prognosticator as Bill Osborne, but I knew that you were going places. <laughs> I couldn't have predicted exactly where, but I could see that, you know, that, that, that fire in your <coughs> eyes and, and that passion you had for the city, and, and it was definitely going to make this a better place for everyone. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Councilman Watts. Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> I, uh, 
I, whenever I have a conversation about what I do as a city councilman, I, I invariably, I'm always telling folks about our city manager uh, being, I, I've never, I, I've worked with a lot of people that have a firm grasp on a lot of different subjects, but I've never worked with someone that had as firm a grasp on as many subjects. It doesn't matter what we're talking about, what's on the agenda. Uh, you were right there uh, herding cats, as, as <laughs> Councilman Adams said. And, and I, I, I tell people that we got the best city manager in the state, mm -hmm. and uh, Marsha Hampton's the smartest person I know. So yeah, that's, that's how I feel about you. Oh, thank you, Coach. Dr. Burdanley. Well, Ms. Hampton, um, this is definitely a, an honor for you to receive this. And with your humility, you're not always looking for, for stuff, and that's what makes you so great. Um, I just want to say thank you for being who you are. And as always, remind you, remember to take care of you and remember your family. But most of all, remember God, and I know you'll do that. Congratulations. Thank you, Councilmember Burdanley. Councilman... You're welcome. Councilman Davis. Yes, uh, thank you, Ms. Hampton. Ms. Hampton and I have been together for a long, <laughs> long, long time. And and I called her when I went to HBC uh, training down in uh, Bainbridge, Georgia, and they did not have me a room. <laughs> <laughs> and she told me to go to the next state, which was Florida. I went to Florida and got a room at the Holiday Inn. I really appreciate it. <laughs> And I never forget when I came in that little cubby hole, That's and I funny. said, "I got to get you out of this cubby hole." <laughs> and I went and talked with Bill, and Bill made it happen. So <laughs> she remember. I remember. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman Davis. Councilman Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Um, I don't want to extend your embarrassment standing up there too much, but uh, I, as like the new kid on this block up here. Um, I had a lot to learn when I started on council almost four years ago. And I would not have learned it as quickly or as well without your guidance. Um, you have been invaluable to me in figuring out how to serve in this role. Mm -hmm. I will never be able to thank you. I, I am so proud that this city has you as our manager. I mean, as everybody has said, you are by far the best in the business. Mm -hmm. I think beyond the state of Georgia. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just so grateful for everything you have done for me personally and for everything you have done for all of us and for the citizens. We are incredibly lucky to have you. Oh, thank you so much, Councilman Estes. And I'll finish, uh, Ms. Hampton, and then we can come around and take a picture. And as everyone said, I don't want to embarrass you very much, but I am going to embarrass you a little bit to say that you are um, a wonderful person outside of being a city manager. And as Mayor Pro Tem said, um, in 2002, when I was on city council, you're one of the first ones that uh, we brought in and as a Main Street manager. And so you've been here for a very long time, um, but you keep it fresh you know, because of innovation and one of those tenants that they said, and uh, the embarrassing part is that you're the same all the time, a person of integrity. Your family, you see it in your mother, you see it in your sisters, your children. Um, it's just across the board. And we are so blessed and fortunate to have you in the city of Douglasville. Everywhere I go, they're trying to steal you away. And I'm like, you can't have my city manager, but you don't embarrass us. You support the council. Um, you don't say no. You say, but <laughs> it's a no. Really, it is a no sometimes, but you figure out um, how to do the things that we like to do that helps the city to move forward. And so thank you for having the patience with us as well. Yeah. And that's all I wanted to say. Let's give city manager a hand, and then we're going to come and take some photos. Mayor, I just... I just want to add one one thing, and because I would be remiss, and, and Councilman Adams reminded me, um, I'll, and I'll be quick, just to thank you all um, as a body and every single elected official I've worked for, um, and just to say that for anyone who, you know, whether it's a City of Douglasville employee or anyone, when you want to do this job and you want to serve, you better understand that you cannot serve by yourself. Um, every single thing that I have done, every single thing that I hope to be able to do, 
Um, I understand that I can't do it without the people that surround me. And really, it's, it's the thing that drives me when I look at what is left to do and how to make you all better um, as legislators and create a path for staff to grow. Because I do understand that the employees who work here, this is a career, this is a labor of love and how they feed their families. And I just want to be able to create a space that they can do that, that exists beyond me, and to make certain that you all are better so those of you who are continuing to serve and those who serve after you have a place that you all can be proud of. So I do thank you for giving me the opportunity to do that. Thank you. All right, come around. Exciting things, exciting. Okay, so we'll move on to um, continue with presentations and announcements. This is very exciting and it just, again, it shows uh, the commitment to the city and the citizens as we serve and provide services that we have a recognition of the Parks and Recreation Department for being selected as a finalist for the National Gold Medal Award. And so our Parks Director, um, Mr. Chris Bass, is going to talk, I know, it's exciting, he's gonna to talk to us about this. Yes, ma'am, thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Um, I would like to um, introduce um, our presenters today, um, Ms. Katie Trolling uh, with the American Academy for Parks Recreation um, Professional Administration, mm -hmm. uh, who I'm sure a few of you all have met as she serves in dual roles, also as our consultant, and Mr. Rob Staples from uh, Musco Lighting, who's the sponsor for the Gold Medal Award. Chris, you stay here with us? Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. Thank you, Mayor and City Council. We would like to um, uh, actually thank you for the introduction. Stay right here, Chris. Uh, we're with you today to present the gold medal finalist plaque to your community. National Gold Medal Award is the premier award in the park and recreation profession honoring agencies throughout the United States that exceed industry standards and establish a higher standard for delivering park and recreation services. Gold Medal final, finalist recipients measure the impact and benefit of their services while addressing community needs through the involvement of citizens, staff, and elected officials into all planning processes. The City of Douglasville Parks and Recreation has demonstrated efforts addressing conservation, equity, and health and wellness. Douglasville Parks and Recreation demonstrates excellence in long-range planning, focusing on putting their vision into reality every year. Creating an innovative culture has also become a habit for the city of Douglasville. We applaud and congratulate Douglasville Parks and Recreation for your outstanding accomplishments. The American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration, the governing organization for the National Gold Medal Award, consists of 125 distinguished practitioners and scholars in the field who commit to advancing the park and recreation profession. Rooted in the desire to advance knowledge, encourage scholarly efforts, and provide services to advance the profession, the Academy focuses on raising the bar to enhance the quality of park and recreation services through the National Gold Medals Awards uh, program. Douglasville Park and Recreation represents the best of the best. Since the award's inception in 1965, in the population category class four, 
populations 30,001 to 75,000, there has only been approximately 300 agencies named a gold medal finalist. 78 agencies have been chosen as the Grand Plaque winner. You have demonstrated significant success with the design and delivery of superior services to the community of Douglasville and remain in the upper echelon of 8,000 plus park and recreation agencies across the nation. This finalist plaque award was given to the Douglasville Parks and Recreation staff at a special reception in conjunction with the National Recreation and Park Conference in Dallas on Monday, October 9th. Again, your agency has been recognized nationally as a leader in park and recreation profession. We are honored to be a part of this local acknowledgement of such a prestigious award. On behalf of the American Academy for Park and Recreation Administration, Musco Lighting, and the National Recreation and Parks Association, we congratulate you on your success. Thank you so much. this here. All right, Mayor Robinson, I just have a few notes. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> just a few notes. Um, it, it is an honor for us to uh, be recognized in this fashion. Um, as I shared before, we could not do this without the support of this body. Um, we do not have to uh, ask um, for those things that, that a lot of different communities have to ask for. You all come to us with those innovative ideas. So we are so appreciative of this elected body. Um, the community who's gotten behind us, um, here recently we've uh, received that, that uh, $75,000 grant um, through community support, so we appreciate that. But I'd be remiss if I did not mention the team that makes up the Parks and Recreation Department. Um, you all see me a lot, but it, there is truly a team of subject matter experts that make this department move forward and that bring awards like this to fruition. Um, just to, to mention a few, in addition to the gold medal award, um, several of our employees were recognized at the national conference, um, one being Jemiah Flagg for um, receiving the diversity scholarship through NRPA. Um, Ms. Tamara Velasco, who also received the Young Professional Fellowship. Ms. Shahara Thrasher, who um, received the uh, American Academy for Parks and Recreation Administration externship. Okay. Um, and outside of those awards here in the past few months, um, Mr. Um, Matt Sanders and Christopher Cartwright were recognized um, and, and supported, recognized us uh, through PGA mm -hmm. by going and playing in uh, local tournaments. So um, it's just, it's a great team. Um, they make my job easy and I could not do what I do without them. So um, I just want to tell the team of Parks and Recreation, thank you for all their support. Thank you so much, Mr. Bass, and Director. I don't know if your chairman wants to say anything. Coach Watt. I would, um, I, I heard someone recently talk about the city uh, needing to move forward, and I would argue that uh, the city is moving forward, and we we have fantastic folks working for the city of Dugsville, and uh, Parks and Recreation is just a class operation led by Chris, and um, I just I just I love to watch them work and accomplish things, and so it's it's just been uh, it's been great being a part of that. Yes. So thank, thank you, Chris, and thank you, staff. Uh, too many to name. I know you've got some here tonight, but uh, <laughs> we've got some great folks working for us. Thank you. We do. A vice chair, Councilman Davis, you want to say anything? Yes. Thanks, Chris. Uh, we talk a lot, and I've been seeing it coming together for a long time, and I really appreciate mm -hmm. you stepping up and taking that, taking that role in director because once that was you stepped up, it was on. Thank you. <laughs> That's true. Councilman Estes. Um, just congrats again. Um, it's amazing what this department is doing. Mm -hmm. and, um, it, it's just, it's beyond words what, what you guys have accomplished. And, and, you're, not, and you're still going. I mean, we, you know, we're, we're already working on the next master plan for the next 10 mm -hmm. years. Um, so it's exciting to, to even start to imagine where we will be 
over the next 10 years. Thank you for everything you do. Thank you, Councilman Estes. Dr. Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Bass, for doing all that you do. I, I often wonder, when do you find time to sleep? Because you're always um, working and from your maintenance staff to the staff that work inside <coughs> the reception area, um, it is it's just the flow from, from your character. The friendliness and the professionalism is amazing. Thank you so much. Thank you, Councilmember Bordanley. Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Chris, thank you for so much for all you've done. I, and I will, I will never tire of us having this much time <laughs> before our, our legislative meetings to talk okay. about all the awards we're, we're winning because the city is doing such a great job, and we're really firing on all, all the cylinders right now. And, and you just, just another example of what we, what we've been doing so well, and, and you, you represent the city so, so perfectly. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you. Councilman Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. Mr. Bass, I just want to personally thank you for all that you've brought with you as, as far as experience and drive and energy uh, in, the, in the last few years that you've been head of the department. I think it's amazing that when you look at our Parks and Rec Department, I don't know how it compares in a lot of the categories that you all have, um, have been involved with, but, but when you also look at the, uh, the new uh, town green that is about to come under your purview and you already have a public golf course that you uh, are also managing with, with help of staff, uh, great staff in all those positions. I think that that, that speaks volumes of, of us moving forward, as Coach Watch has mentioned, because there's, I don't think there's a lot of cities around that, that have that widespread a program, in, not including everything else that is, I won't call it vanilla, but it's, it's the norm. And I think that that speaks volumes for your staff and for all involved to be able to, to pull that off. Thank you all. Thank you, Councilman Adams. And, and lastly, I would say um, to thank Mr. Bass, Director Bass, for being who you are as well, as we said about the city manager and that integrity of doing what's right when no one's looking, that it is exemplified and it shows in the outcome of your product. So I remember when uh, we were contemplating on, you know, for me to appoint you and have you come and be ratified by the council, you were sharing with me, but coming from Columbus and not having accessibility to parks, readily accessibility to parks and how it made a difference in your life. And that has been your passion to motivate and drive you so that others in, uh, can grow up and have parks that are near to them in their communities. So you have done that, well done for doing that in our community. And I want to thank the Academy for being so kind to come out and personally present to us. We really appreciate your time that you've given to make us feel special and to let us know, let the council and the community know how important this um, event and this award is of being a finalist. In Dallas, I opted not to go to Washington, D.C., to go to Dallas and support our parks and director, uh, parks director and the team. And I felt like I was at the Academy Awards. It was wonderful. You all did a great job. So thank you so much. And thank you to the parks team uh, that was so gracious and welcomed me um, when I was there with you. I wasn't part of the parks team that every day they'd get in there and do those things, but I didn't feel like I was a fish out of water. So thank you so much, Director Bass. We'll give you another hand and then we'll come around and take photos. And please come and take pictures with us, the Academy, National Academy. if you can move this way a little bit. 
<laughs> okay. All right. On the count of three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And then on the count of three. One, two, three. And then one more big smile is one, two, three. All right. Thank you. Thank you all for your patience. We appreciate that. Um, we're doing really well. We do have an annual report now, which is the last thing under announcements and presentations. It's an annual report of the City of Douglasville's Wellness uh, Center provided by Premise Health. And it will be our HR director, award-winning HR director, uh, the healthiest city award in the state of Georgia. Uh, Miss uh, Dr. Tab, and she will have um, them talk to us. We need to get some flu shots. Okay, introduce yourself, and then you can do the presentation for us. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Dr. Tia Austin Bean, 6695 Church Street, Human Resources Department. Um, tonight, we will present our annual report on the City of Douglasville's Wellness Center. Uh, if you recall, our Wellness Center opened in March uh, 2020. Mm -hmm. Year one, um, just to remind you, was uh, access for employees only. Year two was access for our employees and their dependents. And year three was access for uh, our retirees uh, and their dependents. Uh, George Wright uh, is here with us tonight, who's the Associate Vice President of Operations for Premise Health. And he will present your report to you. You should have uh, access to your report as well uh, on your tablets. Um, he's going to report on our status of the Wellness Center, utilization, and our employee surveys. And also here with us tonight is uh, Joe Tomorrow, Director of Client Operations for um, our on-site center. So I will turn it over to George at this time. Thank you, Tia. Um, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Council, thank you. for the opportunity here. Um, as Tia said, we want to share some data with you. There's a lot of numbers on these slides. Don't, mm -hmm. Certainly don't want to bore you. Um, but as we go through, if you have questions, happy to entertain those. And I'm going to see if I can make these slides move forward. Okay. So this first slide of data is three columns. First on the left, summarizing the financial uh, details. The center column is utilization statistics. And then to the right is around your health um, risk assessment details for your population. So, and we will get in deeper detail in, in other slides around this. So um, I'm gonna move forward. Um, so this slide breaks down your total cost of operations. So you can see there for this past uh, period, which is from May 1st through April 30 of 23, Total cost of operating the health center was 272,000 and a little change. Um, averages out to about $22,680 per month. Okay, a couple of things to point out here. So you'll you'll see there below that the health center cost for a visit is a little bit more than the market cost uh, from the community. A couple of reasons for that. We've got opportunity for utilization, and we'll look at some of the utilization statistics with that. So. If you think of this as, we've got some educators here, so if you think of this as a math equation, the numerator is that total cost, mm -hmm. and the denominator is the, um, is the total visits. So the more visits we have, the more we dilute that cost. And mm -hmm. so we've got that opportunity to drive some more um, utilization and lower that overall average cost. But there's a positive side too, as well, and I'll, I'll get to that as we move through. You see the breakdown here. Um, uh, the overall um, cost there per visit. But over to the right side, you can also see the savings that your members have. So when they utilize the health center, they avoid the copay that they would have if they go to a community provider. They avoid the copay for the medication that is dispensed through the health center. 
so your members, your, your employees, retirees, and dependents who utilize the health center, they saved almost $25,000 by doing that. So uh, in essence, you're providing that additional benefit to your population to use the health center on site. Okay. Um, this is basically the same information, a little bit less detail, uh, but it, it is exactly the same as the prior and then same thing for this slide. So I'm just gonna move through those. This breaks down your monthly cost. You can see there's some variability month to month, just depends on supplies that are ordered, uh, payroll cycles, some things like that. And we review these um, statistics on a monthly basis with, with Tia and her team as well. Um, so here's where, it, if you look at this slide at the top, we're looking at the provider capacity. So we measure this by the number of minutes in a time frame, whether it's in a month, a week, a year, uh, that the provider is available to see patients. So when we're actually in the clinic and have appointment availability, and then we also look at how many minutes that provider is booked. When is that uh, provider, Dr. Williams, when is she occupied with a patient um, um, exam? And, it, you know, you can see there are 14,000 minutes of time that were used, but 36, almost 37,000 minutes available. So that's how we get to that 39% capacity. So there's plenty of room, which is a double-edged sword. The good thing about it is if you have an employee in the city who is sick, they can get in pretty quickly. We can see them, in most cases, the same day, typically within a couple of hours of their need. So that's a great resource for your, for your employees. From the financial side, though, obviously, we don't want to pay a physician to sit there and not have patients to see. Now, we utilize, utilize that time in other ways. The physician is calling patients back about lab values, following up on referrals, things like that. So it's not totally downtime or wasted time, but it's certainly opportunity that we can see additional patients. So we wanna make sure we fill up that time. Uh, in the center you see there, the physician is only available on Mondays and Thursdays. That's our current uh, clinical schedule for the physician. Monday is less utilized, when, uh, Thursday a little bit more so, but both days we have opportunity there. Then further to the right there, you can see um, that chart shows you the, the reason for folks coming in. So the uh, vast majority, almost 77%, are coming in for primary care visits. So whether that's a well woman exam, an annual physical, a sick visit for a cold or flu or something like that, most of our folks we're seeing for primary care. About 20% of those are occupational health visits. A lot of that is related to um, your drug testing program, or it could be a pre-employment clearance, or it could even be a work-related injury that we're seeing uh, for that. And then a small percentage is um, biometric screening. That's your health risk assessment. And that's another opportunity we'll talk about. Uh, on, on a subsequent slide. And then you can kind of see down below the visit density. That heat map just kind of shows you when people are coming in, what's the popular time? So the brighter red color is when we're busiest and the darker blue is when we're least busy. And then the Tuesday, Wednesday, again, I mentioned the provider is there on Monday and Thursday. We have a registered nurse who is there Monday through Thursday. So typically on Tuesday, Wednesday, the registered nurse can triage patients. She can draw labs that have been ordered by the provider, provide flu shots, draw biometric labs, and things like that. So there's still opportunity for patients, for members to come in and be seen on those days. Okay. So this is your biometric summary, this slide. And the, the, the point I'd like to make on this is that as we get more of your population coming in for their health risk assessment and their biometrics, we draw labs on this population and we provide them feedback on what we found in those labs. And so if you look at this, we're measuring their BMI, measuring their uh, blood pressure, diastolic and systolic, cholesterol ratios, cholesterol, total cholesterol, and so on. Um, so the color coding here, and you can see to the right, there's your chart that shows you that the red are your high risk areas. So of the population that had their health risk assessment done, the red is definitely not a good sign. The yellows are at a moderate risk, and the greens are in pretty good shape. 
So you can see we've identified risks for those members who do, do come in. And just like our total utilization, we only did 68 total health risk assessments. So for your population, I think that probably represents, you know, maybe 25% or less of the total eligible members. So again, another opportunity to engage with your uh, employees and dependents that are eligible to come in, get this blood work done so we can help direct their care. And the thing with this, if you see the uh, chart to the bottom right there, um, and these statistics on savings or cost avoided come from peer-reviewed medical research journals. So for every uh, member who's uh, identified as potentially diabetic, and there were 13 in this case, uh, in this round of biometrics, that's almost $11,000, $10,683 per instance of potential cost avoided. And the reason is because if we identify it early, we can begin treating it. We can begin managing, um, recommending lifestyle changes, et cetera, so that they don't incur costs that cost the city money for you know, complications, ER admissions and, and hospital admissions, et cetera. So uh, potential cost avoided just on diabetes was almost $139,000. Mm -hmm. And you can see so on down the line for hypertension, uh, and obesity as well. So of those risks identified, as we engage with those members and help them manage that care, that's $337,000 of potential health care costs that the city could incur that we can avoid by managing those patients. So the next slide here, it looks very similar, but what we're doing here is comparing how we're moving the needle on folks who have been in, in prior visits and their uh, biometric data. So you'll see the top chart shows an FV, which is um, a first value, and an LV is a last value. So we're comparing the first time that we did this to the most recent time we did this, and the change that we've seen since then from intervening, counseling, education, providing medications as necessary, et cetera. And you can see all of those that are trending in the green as improved, except the very first one, BMI. And this is not just for city of Douglasville. This is every client that I sit in front of. BMI is, it's, it's who we are as a country. It's who we are as a society, unfortunately. Um, but it's certainly still an opportunity, and we do counsel your employees, your dependents, when they come in with these health risks. We go through a process of assessing their readiness to make a change. Most people know they're overweight. Most people know they don't need to smoke. They know these things, but they're not quite ready. And so we talk to them, you know, in a way that we understand, are you ready to talk about this? Are you ready to make a change? You can't force this on folks. So there's a technique to it, and we, we uh, train our staff to do this. And so we want to move the needle. And you can see from this, for those folks who have had multiple visits, we are improving their numbers. It's getting better for them. So um, this chart just shows you of, of the Folks that we've seen, what kind of diagnoses do we see? What type of medications have we dispensed? And what type of labs have we done? Well, it really just depends on who we see and for what reason, okay? So I'll start with the chart on the left there. You can see the green colored, those are chronic conditions. Those are the conditions that cost the city money on your health plan. And they're the conditions that cause issues with disability and lost productivity and all of those things. So it's a good thing that we're seeing those folks in the health center so we can help manage them, help them improve those outcomes. But there's also, of course, the, you know, the, the acute injuries, a low back pain or uh, a, a, an allergic rhinitis, you know, seasonal allergies, those kinds of things. So you can see we're seeing a combination of those, but the, the majority of them are for chronic conditions. Uh, the center column, that should typically match the diagnoses because we're going to prescribe and dispense medications based on what we see. So you see medications in there for, um, for hypertension. You see a couple, I don't know if I see anything for cholesterols in there. So we're addressing those chronic conditions as well as some, you know, um, things for the seasonal allergies and that kind of thing. 
Um, and you can see there, 350 medications were dispensed at an average cost of 13.45 and uh, 19 cents per day of therapy. So they're getting, you know, generic first-tier medications through the health center. Uh, again, saving the member money and saving your health plan uh, money. Um, the labs on the uh, the right column there, again, that HRA column. That number you'll see for HRA is higher than what we saw before because some members we may have come back and we'll repeat their labs if something is out of line. They may want to say, hey, I want to see if I can improve this, and they come back. So that's what you're seeing there is why that number doesn't match. And, um, you know, again, uh, total cost of labs, about $4,400, still a, a, a good value uh, on those. So I'll move on to this. This is a, an extremely positive uh, slide here. So again, while we have low utilization and, and it's a great opportunity for us to improve, the positive thing is that those folks that do use it, 93% would recommend it. So if you're familiar with a net promoter score, and I think most people in the world are today, that's basically saying if you use this service, would you recommend it to a friend, a family member, a coworker, or whoever? And that's on a scale of a, all the way to a negative 100 up to a positive 100. So when you're sitting at an 82, that's a pretty strongly positive uh, net promoter score. Um, so the folks who use it are loving it. We just need to get more folks in um, and engaged with the health center. And then this last page just kind of shows you a breakdown of what did you spend the money on to operate the health center. So whether it's equipment, the labs, the uh, staffing, the management fee for premise, that's our profit, um, et cetera. So there's, that's just kind of the breakdown of, of where the money went. And if you look at it, it's not on here, but I think on the, one of the previous slides, um, your cost of operating the health center went up by 2.6% year over year. If you look at the trending in the world for health care, it's double digit inflation. Mm -hmm. So your costs were much lower than what, um, what they are typically in the community. And I'm going to pause there and, um, and ask if there are any questions or anything else I can go back and clarify. Okay. Um, I do have a couple of questions, and then I'll um, start with the chair of this committee to ask. Thank you so much for the presentation. So um, the first thing is, do we have opportunity for capacity of more um, persons? For example, the Water and Sewer Authority director talked to me about this, and I'm not certain if he mentioned or their HR to mention to you, Ms. Dr. Tab, about maybe having a collaboration that the, the our health uh, clinic can be for their employees as well. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, Did they I talk will... to you about it, Dr. Tab? Yes, ma'am, Madam Mayor. Um, we are actually um, partnering with our uh, ben uh, benefits broker, um, to uh, which is the same for the Water and Sewer Authority. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had discussions okay. with the Water and Sewer Authority already. They've come and done a tour at our wellness center. Okay. And so um, we expect in by mid-December that we will have some information to bring back um, to the city manager's office and to Mayor, um, and subsequently um, at, at the right time to you all about a cost-sharing model. Um, we do have interest. And so uh, what we're doing is um, working with those HR folks over there, looking at what their covered lives are, mm -hmm. and then um, drilling down to a proposed model um, to uh, bring to the city manager's office first uh, for review of that. So uh, they did express that, um, and we have um, been in talks with them. So I hope to have something to you all soon to be able to look at. Very good, then that would help with participation and hopefully pay for itself so that we will not have, you know, the cost that uh, exceeds uh, the usability of the uh, lab. I, and I, I think it's great. I, the other thing I was going to ask, and this is for um, Dr. Tab as well, the, uh, HR director, maybe we can do an initiative to get out and do a road show or something with each department so that people know all of, because I'm learning it seems like it's ever growing. More services that are, are that are provided for us, or that we have access to, that I didn't realize, like prescriptions. Or, I mean, and and we're pretty healthy. I mean, we're the healthiest employer for the state of Georgia. But if we have, you know, yoga with the police department and 
and um, ADP and fresh food and all of that, we may not have as many sick people because we're doing so well trying to keep everyone healthy. But um, maybe go yes, on the road and kind of show and do each department or have a, sure. um, uh, I don't even know, a demonstration or, you know, just to try to get people or an incentive, give them ice cream and that'll raise the sugar level, but gives everyone like a little card or something and have them come and visit or talk to them about it so that we can have, because it is a great convenience. Yes, you, know, you don't have to pay the copay, and you have all these services right there for you. Yes, ma'am. I have an um, upcoming meeting um, with oh. the um, assistant city manager and uh, city manager of the office to talk about uh, our wellness center, just an okay. overall okay. overview of that. So I will take that back, and um, we will come up with something maybe. Um, and the wellness center is always um, open to do tours. Um, okay. That's how we're able to bring WSA to, um, mm -hmm. um, at okay. a short, you know, a short notice to come and tour it. Um, so we'll have something for our employees to be able to make sure that uh, they understand, you know. Mm -hmm. what's offered to them um, come inside and, and um, anything else that you all would like to see we'll make sure that um, we make that happen well, thank you so much so the reputation is growing that's what WSA asked me like can we want to come as well so I'll open up uh, Councilman Watts this is your committee chair you have anything I, I don't really have anything just appreciate your uh, report tonight and uh, just I'm proud of the fact that uh, this is another uh, amenity, if you will, uh, that the city offers its employees, and I'm looking forward to the day that even more of them take advantage of it and appreciate all that y'all have done. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, our Councilman Adams does not have any questions. Mayor Pro Tem, you have anything? Dr. Burdanley, Councilman Davis, Councilman Estes, yes, sir. Um, I don't, I don't know which one of you can answer this, but it, it's. Uh, significant decrease in the in the number of health risk assessments that have been done mm -hmm. in this past period do, do you know why that is is it I because don't. everybody got it last year and isn't worried about doing it this year or what um no we still have um interest um, we do get asked um every you know um, month from employees about um just the reporting and make sure that they're on on the monthly reports um, and we do reminders um, in our director staff meeting okay. about um, what's available and just to, to encourage our employees. So um, it's just, it ebbs and flows as you yeah. saw on the report. So, um, but yeah, we'll- Yeah, I, no, I get that. It was just such a dramatic decrease. I, I just wanted to see if there was any particular reason. Thanks. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, Councilman um, Estes. And thank you all, Mr. Provis and um, HR department for your flexibility. We ap apologize for having you go into the council meeting. I know you were ready to present at committees and we had um, some information we ran over. So thank you. We appreciate your patience in coming presenting the information to us. Thank you. Our pleasure. You're welcome. Yes, sir. You have a thank good you. evening. Thank you. So we'll move on with uh, committees. We're at Economic Development Committee. That's chaired by City Council Member Mayor Pro Tem Terry Miller. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business at this time under the Economic Development Committee. Thank you, sir. Finance Committee, chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Finance has no business tonight. Thank you, Councilman Adams. Housing and Community Affairs Committee, chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Burdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Legislative and Intergovernmental Committee, chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. No business tonight, Madam Mayor. Thanks. You're welcome. Thanks, Councilman Davis. Personnel and Organization Committee, chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business tonight in personnel and organization. Thank you, sir. Um, item 10, Planning and Development Committee, chaired by Councilmember Mark Adams. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have uh, three items tonight to discuss. Yes, sir. Uh, we'll begin with item A, consider a request for plat approval for the purpose of combining approximately 22.147 acres at Mount Vernon Road in land lot 715, District mm -hmm. 18, Section 2. Parcels 0715-182-0015, 0715-182-0005, and 0715-182-0008. Application by Paulson Mitchell Incorporated, care of Matthew Irwin. Mr. Gordon's going to help us with that. How are you, Mr. Thank Gordon? Good evening, Mayor and Council. I'm James Gordon of 6701 Church Street Engineering Department. This plat is to combine three separate parcels mm -hmm. uh, into one larger, uh, over 22-acre parcel. It also dedicates um, 
2.3 acres of land out on Lynch Road back to the city at a little small strip that was given to us. Thank you, Mr. Gordon. This is the site of what business it is operating there now? It's a warehouse that's under construction right okay. here at the corner. Almost completed. I was by there just a few yes, days Yes, that's ago. correct. Yes. It is. It's okay. very so basically nice looking. it's a housekeeping item to clean up to combine three plats into one? Correct. Correct. This is uh, to clean up the, the need for the land to be recorded. So we need to go to recording. Okay. Thank you. Any comments or questions, uh, Madam Mayor or Council, anyone have any question concerning this request? I do not. Okay. Um, we'll take this up then on Monday for a vote, and we appreciate your input, Mr. Gordon. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Move on to item B. Consider whether to accept the petition of Karen Singh to annex 0 .82 acres of land located at 11941 Veterans Memorial Highway, land lot 744, District 18, Section 2, Parcel ID is 0744182013, Douglas County, Georgia, into the city limits of the city of Douglasville. Ms. Marissa Jackson is going to help us with that. Hello, Ms. Jackson. Hello, good evening. Marissa Jackson, Planning and Zoning Administrator, 6701 Church Street. Um, the applicant, Mr. Singh, has reached out to us, and he intends to request an annexation. The site is located at the intersection of Veterans Memorial and Dodson Drive. Um, and staff is requesting clearance to receive and process the annexation application as we've done in the past. Okay. Uh, this is the location, um, for those of you all that are familiar with the area, I, I rode today to find it to make sure I knew what we were talking about tonight and what's being considered. This is the corner of Dodson and what I would have always called Bankhead Highway, now Veterans Memorial, where the Burgers Market was mm -hmm. for many years. Uh, Councilman Davis has a lot of history in that general area uh, growing up, uh, which he may want to share with us. But this is just for us to give authorization for it to go through the process, for us to start the process. Is that right, Ms. Jackson? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll open the floor to any comment uh, from mayor or council uh, as to any reason why we would or would not want to move it forward. Anyone? Yes, Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman and Ms. Jackson. Is I, I was driving trying to find it as well. Is it near um, Stoddard? Right next door. There, there's a there's an old car wash building I think between them. Okay. Okay. So I, it's I on the corner was... of Veterans okay. Memorial and Dodson Drive. Okay. Burgers I, Market. I, I sell flowers. Oh pine yes, sir. Straw, things yes, of that sir. nature. Now. The yes, old sir. Tiger Den. The old Tiger's Den and Jitney Jr. All right. That's correct. <laughs> Anyone else? Okay. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. We'll take this up on uh, Monday. Thank you. One more item. Refer to the Planning mm -hmm. Commission an amendment to Section 7.15 of the Unified Development Ordinance to allow for disposal of removed illegal signs. Our uh, city uh, attorney, Ms. Miranda Jordan, is going to help us with that. Ms. Jordan? Good evening, Councilman Adams, evening. Mayor and Council. So earlier this year, um, last month specifically, City staff presented to the mayor and council regarding the storage and disposal of removed illegal signs under the enforcement section of Article 7 of the Unified Development Ordinance. And it was determined by the consensus of the mayor and council um, that the city should only store removed illegal signs for a period of 10 days um, before those signs would be uh, disposed of and unable to be returned to their owners. The owners would have that 10 day period to come and claim their signs. So this will need to be referred to the planning commission if mayor and council wish to move this item forward for their consideration as a text amendment. And then it would be back before mayor and council in December for a vote. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jordan. I'll open the floor for any additional comments or discussion. I know that uh, the wording of this already shows that there was consensus between all of us, and Coach Watts uh, has his hand up to say, make a statement. Go ahead, Coach. Hi, uh, my question is how long after a sign is taken up is before the candidate's notified? Is it the same day, or is it a couple days, or if it's taken up? I, I mean, I don't know what the what zoning uh, when they do that and. I just was wondering about the period of time. 
Sure. So under the current enforcement section of the sign ordinance, there's actually no requirement for notice if the sign is placed illegally. So the sign is just taken up without notice to the owner of the sign. It would be up to the owner of the sign to track that down. If the mayor and council desired to put language in there to that effect that they would have to be given notice, then I can work on that as, a, as an addition to this before Monday's meeting. Uh, but under the current <coughs> ordinance, that's not required. If I, might, if I might interject, Coach, I think this would require the candidate uh, or their team then to be more involved to make sure that they review the location of where those have been placed and know themselves that they're missing. Right, and I do believe at this time that as a courtesy, the Community Development Department has been notifying the candidates um, that their signs have been removed. Um, but this would also not only just apply to candidate signs, but to all signs that are placed illegally within the city limits. Comments, questions, anyone else? All right, I was going to ask that we place this on the consent agenda, but since we uh, need to have more information concerning a time period, as Coach has requested, uh, I will not do that. Is that possible, uh, Ms. Jordan, for us to interject <coughs> language before Monday so that we could have some information for the public as to how much time they have, or, or do we want to go forward without it? Comment? Did you have something, Ms. Estes? Go ahead. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I don't want to put too much of a burden on staff, but I do think it might be helpful for staff to have, you know, a, a time frame to send an email or something to a candidate because it, it could prevent accusations after the fact that things were removed without anybody being notified and their signs were thrown away, I, I can just see issues, uh, you know, in the future from from candidates or, or businesses or whatever. So I, I think it makes sense unless staff has an issue with, uh, to me it makes sense to have that in there, that, that there is a time frame for notification. The only- Or attempt at right. notification. It doesn't have to, you know, we called or we emailed on X date notifying the only issue that I could see with that is that election signs might be treated with a little bit more deference than other signs where we might not easily be able to identify the owner of the sign quickly well, enough to notify maybe them. if there is some way to word that where you know if possible to contact an owner or uh, yeah there's some that you'll never know I just, I don't want to set staff up to get a bunch of complaints from a disgruntled candidate or anyone else whose sign is removed and claims they weren't notified. Do you want language in there that just covers the fact that it doesn't maybe necessarily put in a time frame, but it just addresses the fact that you will be notified um, of uh, signs being picked up after a certain amount of time. Because I mean, we do, with election season, we actually notify them fairly early. It's just part of our practice. It's just not codified in the code. Uh, well, then, if, if it's already being done, is it yeah. necessary to codify it? It's not necessary. Um, we can put it at a, a staff level for like standard operating procedures and I, not necessarily have it I think I think that, that makes way. sense. We can do it that way. Just to protect staff again. We can do it that way. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Then, I, then I'm fine with moving forward on Monday. Yeah. Madam Mayor, make a, may I make a comment as well? Sure. And it's only for individuals that are um, in the city election race, of course, right? These would be signs in general in the city. Oh so if a county candidate, um, wow, yeah, that's a lot. We don't, yeah, we don't determine, you know, what is on the sign. I mean, that's a lot in regards to contacting if it's if they don't register with. Agreed, the but city. if I mean, you could send a summary every day or once a week to the county elections office or something. Or if when if if those that uh, and this is something that probably could be done with the county as well. 
but if if when they register or qualify with the city, you go over information about signs and then they sign off on it on how like the protocol of and this give happens. a give a valid email address a that, copy. that they will be notified right. by. Mm -hmm. We do send we do send the email to the election su or the um, information to the election superintendent about sign placement in the city. What we can do is just have um, the clerk's office reach out to uh, the county to get a contact list of all the candidates that are I, running for county election. I, I, I know we have some now, but we can make that a part of our and practice. for the state and national. I, we don't need to worry about those, but right. but it's for the local, I think mm -hmm. we we need to cover ourselves. We'll Thank get you. everyone that's qualified. Okay, great. Thanks. Madam City Manager, do we not already go over um, when when the candidate qualifies, and there's some in the room that can attest to this that are running right now. We do. Uh, you go over the rules. Mm -hmm. So I'm of the opinion you, you put the onus back on the candidate to be responsible for the signs that are out, that are theirs. They're the ones that, those, they're those signs, they're the ones getting benefit of the sign. Okay. They should be responsible enough to keep up with the signs. And, and we have included language in the proposed amendment to um, include that the city shall have no liability to any party for enforcement and disposal under this subsection. So I believe that that protects the city from any untoward accusations that may come forward. I, I, it would ideally protect the city from that. Okay, so where, where are we then? Do we, do we ask for additional language do we move forward as it is on monday my recommendation mr chair is that any language that we put in for time frame and contact and be held at the department level so we'll just put that as far as the standard operating procedure as to okay. what we do rather than putting in an ordinance with that being said then would it be appropriate to place this on the consent agenda yes please do thank you thank you all right thank you all for your comments madam mayor that's all that we have tonight under that committee thank you so much mr chairman I appreciate that. We'll move on to public improvement and beautification. And um, I'll ask the vice chair. I'm trying to see who it is. So we'll, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, if you don't mind taking that committee, please. Yes, Madam Mayor. We have one item under the Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. That is to appoint Katie Arfanakis to post three of the Keep Douglasville Beautiful Board to serve a three-year term expiring December 31st, 2026. And Ms. Chelsea Jackson will introduce us to that item. Thank you, Mayor Pro Tem. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street, Administration Department. Um, as Mayor Pro Tem read, Ms. Katie Arfanakis is interested in serving on the post three post um, for the Douglasville, Keep Douglasville Beautiful post. Um, the term will end December 31st, 2026. There are no other individuals interested at this time. We do have two other openings for the KDB board that will start on January 1st. So if you all know anyone, anyone who is interested in serving on the board, it'll be for a three-year term. So I'll be coming before you in the next month or so um, to ask you to appoint other individuals as well. And then just to add, Councilman Miller, myself, and Chan Weeks actually interviewed Ms. Katie Arfanakis earlier this week. So Ms. Ms. Miller did recommend her to be appointed to the board. Thank you, Ms. Jackson. Uh, any questions or comments, Mayor or Council? Mr. Mayor Pro Tem, I just sure. wanted to make sure is Ms. Arfanakis, she's involved in several things within the city proper already, is she not? Other boards, other, other uh, assistants? She's not on any other board. She does serve like with the chamber and on Leadership Douglas, I believe, currently. But she stated that she was looking to do things outside of her normal um, preview. So she's a communications director currently for mm -hmm. Douglas Dental, but she wants to go more into beautification. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Adams. Any other questions or comments? Um, if it is the council's will, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Mm -hmm. So moved. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That's all we have under the Public Improvement and Beautification Committee. Thank you so much, Mr. Mayor Piltem. We'll move on then, uh, then to Public Relations Committee, chaired by Councilmember Howard Estes. Thank you, Madam Mayor. The PR Committee has no business this evening. Thank you, sir. Public Safety Committee, and that's chaired by Councilmember Samuel Davis. Yes, I have one item. Item yes, A, sir. hold a public hearing to consider the application for the alcoholic beverage license for the retail package sale of wine and malt beverage at the following establishment proposed license Quick Trip Corporation, DBA Quick Trip number 1723, location 58615 Road, proposed agent outlet manager John Tucker. The required fees have been paid into the finance department. Mr. Tucker, please come down. How are you today? I'm well. Uh, hello, my name is John Tucker. I'm an area supervisor for Quick Trip. 
um, corporation. So just Can you state your name and uh, speak up a little louder? So uh, I'm sorry. My name is John Tucker. I'm the area supervisor for Quick Trip Corporation. So just here on behalf of trying to get a liquor license for our new location, um, 1723. Um, that's the store number at 5A61 Fairburn Road, uh, Douglasville, Georgia. Did you say liquor license or beer and wine? Beer and wine, I'm sorry. That's quit your terminology, but beer and wine, okay. correct. Okay. So, Mr. Tucker, uh, we'll do a uh, public hearing tonight. <coughs> I have some questions the council private ask them on uh, how you go about training your employees on the uh, register of sale of uh, alcoholic beverages. Um, well, we, we have four steps to that. Um, initially, when they apply, we go through extensive training there. Um, as far as whatever the county or state law is, we train them on that. Um, and then we do hands-on training in the stores as well as far as on their cash register um, with different transactions. Um, we also have prompts on the screen to help with guiding employees on how to um, properly ring up alcohol, tobacco, e cig transactions. Um, so the employees must pass, pass training and have ongoing, ongoing training each quarter. Um, we have different employees that train our employees on how to properly ring alcohol and tobacco and e cig product. Okay, now we hear from the mayor, starting with the Madam Mayor. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. I don't have any questions. I think you've answered everything. Um, did you answer how you uh, how your employees are trained? Yes. So again, just from a training standpoint, um, we have a, a particular trainer that actually mm -hmm. trains them, uh -huh. um, and then it's ongoing training within the store once a quarter, whether it be rollballing it, whether it be updating any policies or procedures. Okay, so they know to check everyone's license, and that's part of what is for. Um, the legal uh, age for alcohol. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Any other council members? Question. Yes. Thank council you, Mr. Adams. Chairman. Mr. Tucker, I'm just curious. How long have you been with Quick Trip? Fifteen years. Fifteen years. Yes, sir. How many states do you operate in now? Do you know? Oh, well, um, we we actually have a, a, another part of our network where we're locating in like different states. So right now we're in nine, um, but we're popping up in different markets now. The reason I ask is you mentioned, depending upon what state and what locality you're operating in, of course, each state would, may have different laws. Correct. Uh, but I appreciate this would be store number three within our community. Uh, Chief Sparks, uh, do we have any issues with the other locations as far as uh, illegal sale or problems? No, sir. We hadn't had any. Thank you. Appreciate you, Mr. Tucker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Anyone else? Mr. Tucker, uh, I'm sure you're familiar with the uh, what time the last call at night for sales. You, you have all that in your package, I, I believe. Um, well, it, it really all depends on the county because um, I supervise like 20 stores. Some are 11:45, some are 11:30, some are one, and some are two. Um, but we update that policy for all our employees to be able to locate that for whatever county or city that we have a quick trip in so they're able to go and directly find that information that's what i want to hear okay at this time we're going to open up the floor to have a uh, a, a public hearing on uh, this item and they have five minutes to speak against and five minutes to speak for this item so at the time i'm going to open it up to hear from anyone that want to speak against this item okay i see no takers i'm going to open it up for, for Five minutes for those who speak for this. Like I see no takers, I'm going to close the public hearing. And uh, if it's the uh, council will, I'd like to put uh, this item, Quick Trip, on the consent agenda. They've been a good student here in our city. And uh, we can't? Oh, we can't. No. Okay, so we'll come back on Monday. Yes, sir. Thank okay. you. That's all I have. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. Thank, Thank you, sir. Thank you. We'll move on then to Recreation, Culture, and Tourism Committee. That's chaired by Councilmember Chris Watts. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You're welcome. <clears throat> we have uh, several items tonight. Mm -hmm. Item A, authorize the mayor to sign an agreement with JBS Paving <coughs> LLC for the paving and concrete project at the West Pines 
golf course maintenance building located at 9090 Rose Avenue at a cost of $63,000. And Mr. Thompson will handle this item. Sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, didn't, I just read, read, no, didn't fine. look up. I'm sorry. Alicia Mann, um, project manager, 6701 Church Street. What you have in front of you is an agreement with JBS Paving to do the asphalt and concrete at the West Pines Maintenance Center. It'll include them redoing the asphalt driveway coming from Clenchy Club Drive over to the front of the newly uh, renovated building out there. Also, it includes a concrete pad that'll go to the right of the building for the purpose of um, personnel and staff to park as well as to drive their equipment into the maintenance building. Um, if you have any questions, I'm here to answer. Thank you. Um, anyone? Yes, sir, Ms. Mr. Yes, the uh, maintenance building behind the uh, high school? Correct. Okay. I was down there the other day. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you. Um, I'm going to ask to uh, place this on the consent agenda from, for uh, Monday. All right. I got a feeling. Are you? Oh, okay. Uh, item B, authorize the mayor to sign change order Five with Reeves Young LLC for the Jesse Davis Park renovation for the purpose of including an exercise room and the football field lighting in the amount of $302,345.56. And uh, Mr. Thompson will handle this one. <laughs> All right. Good evening, Madam Mayor and Council. Marcus Thompson, City Engineer, 6701 Church Street, Douglasville, Georgia. 30134. All right, so the change order before you this evening evening is basically a request by city staff. It reflects um, revisions to a proposed meeting room for the new gymnasium at the Jesse Day Davis Park. Um, it basically transitions the space into a light fitness exercise area. The change order includes athletic flooring and wall glass only. And also included is the furnishing, the furnishing and an installment of the Musco lighting, sport lighting system, retrofitting the existing infra lighting infrastructure at the football field, which was not included in the original scope. Are there any questions or concerns? The, the, the lighting for the football field was not included in the original? It's not? N no, sir. Okay. Wow. All right. How'd I miss that who one? Missed the, who missed the... Uh, who missed that? Well, um, is there, I mean, is that standard? Is, is there a reason that it was not included? I, I see Mr. Bass heading our way, so uh, he may have the answer to the question. Who missed that? Yes, sir, that wasn't in the original scope, but one of the things that we looked at is um, updating our lighting system throughout, and this will actually put us on our new system with all the other parks. So at Fowler Field, Hunter Park, we'll be on the same system as Jesse Davis. So it was just, that was not part of the initial scope of work. Okay. All right, thank you. Yes, Mr. Uh, well, Mr. Davis, did you have anything else? No. Okay, I'm looking Mr. At Mr. Uh, Adams. Yes, just curious, I want to make sure, verify where these funds are coming from, please. Yes, uh, the funds will be coming from our um, contingency, the owner's contingency. Again? Uh, uh, the owner's contingency for the um, construction of the project. Of this project? Yes. Okay, all right, thank you. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other questions, concerns? All right, um, I'm going to ask to place this on the consent agenda, if that's okay. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Thompson. Right. Green. Thank you. All right. Item, um, what are we on now? C, authorize the mayor to sign a memorandum of agreement with Cobb and Douglas Public Health for the purpose of accepting the 2023-2024 Community Health Improvement Plan Partnership Grant in the amount of $25,000, and Ms. Thrasher will handle this. Good evening, Mayor and Council Shahar Thrasher, Operations Manager with the City of Douglasville Parks and Rec Department. 
8830 Gurley Road. Um, so this is a grant that we recently received from Cobb and Douglas Public Health. Um, it is their Community Health Improvement Plan Partnership Grant. This is a match grant, a dollar for dollar match grant. Um, so we will be using SPLOS funds. Um, for this project, we will be putting out um, outdoor fitness equipment at Fowler Field. Any questions? Okay. Um, questions or comments? All right. Uh, thank you, Ms. Thrasher. So you say this will be used at Fowler Field, you say? Yes, sir. Okay. Well, it, uh, so we'll 25 in the city will match 25. Yes, sir. Is, is, will this be in conjunction with the uh, other grant that we received? Will they work together on the same project, or is this something... Separate. It'll it'll be a different project. The other grant is for the rainwater garden, right. and this one will be for the outdoor workout equipment. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Sure. All right. Um, if it's okay with council, I'd like to place this on the consent agenda for Monday. Looks like it's a go, Coach. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Thrasher. Um, and then item D. Adopt a resolution to authorize the purchase of a table for the City of Douglasville officials to attend the annual gala of the Cultural Arts Council of the Douglasville, Douglas County, Inc. And Ms. Hampton will handle this. Um, yes, sir. Uh, this, <laughs> several of you have um, mentioned that you wanted to go to the CAC gala, and because this is not part of your administrative ordinance as an allowable expense, um, we're having to pass a resolution to purchase the table for you all to attend. My recommendation for subsequent years, um, I did ask Ms. Jackson to work with Ms. Leitner to just include this in your annual agreement so you all don't have to do this every time you want to purchase oh, a table. So it's not in our agreement? Uh, it's not in your annual agreement, no, sir. Questions or comments? Do we have enough individuals that have shown the desire to go to, to need a table? To I won't be going. Obviously, we have a need yeah. uh, for a certain amount of individuals. Yeah. Be Even if, if you want, we do one, we, we have to change the, um, change the language to say purchase certain a number of tickets, so it may just work better just to say a table, sure. and we can fill it with staff members. Thank you. And we're just talking about one table. Yes, okay. Any other comments or questions? All right. We'll, we'll place this on uh, consent agenda for Monday. Okay. Madam Mayor, that's all I had tonight under recreation, culture, and tourism. Thank you so much, Mr. Chairman. We'll move on then to technology uh, committee chaired by Mr. Uh, Councilman, Mayor Pro Tem Steve. Thank you, Madam Mayor. We have no business under the technology committee at this time. Thank you, sir. Transportation committee chaired by Councilmember Dr. LaShawn Verdanley. Thank you, Madam Mayor. No business tonight. Thank you, ma'am. Other business, do we have any other business to come before council tonight from the elected officials? Um, I had a couple of things. I know we didn't have another meeting, so we must have doubled up because we had those extra time where we didn't have a meeting in between. Um, city manager, is this for the council about the panel, the new requirement from Mr. Kidd at uh, Douglas County voter registration, or is it? Apparently, it, it, there have been panels before, but this is the first time I know that um, Ms. Vicki has, uh, he's reached out to Ms. Vicki, but mm -hmm. I know that there's some people who said they've served on the panel. So okay. um, we just sent you all the information because um, it hadn't been a regular request, just so that you all are aware. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, Stranger Things, we're having our annual um, celebration of that this weekend, and so... I've received a few messages and a couple of phone calls and text messages about it. They saw something that was advertised. And so um, I, you all were gracious enough to provide a map and tell me all the events that's going on. And Miss Chelsea, I don't know if she's going to have her skates on again, but uh, the roller rink is at O'Neill Plaza and the arcades. And there'll still be um, all the eateries downtown. We have about six that are participating. Um, Dreaming Suites, Fabiano's, High New Eatery, Hudson's Hickory Barbecue, Tito's Lounge, and Food Trucks. And um, Selfie Spots is going to be really exciting. And, and then it uh, culminates at our amphitheater uh, area in the town green. And so I'm not certain if anyone's going to talk about all that, but I just wanted to give a brief overview. Oh, you're coming to tell us? Because I'm 
I started getting bing, bing, bing this morning. I said, what's going on? It's like, it's something at the amphitheater. I thought it was closed. Are you guys opening it up? It's uh, Emily Hardaway, uh, Community Outreach Coordinator, 6695 Church Street. Um, so yes, so Stranger Things will be, our block party will be occurring on Saturday from five to nine. Um, our CVB, they are the ones who are putting this on. Um, as you already mentioned, Mayor, we'll have a, a roller rink up on the plaza with some selfie spots. Um, and then kind of all throughout downtown, there will be an opportunity to play Dungeons and Dragons at Douglasville Books. Um, and then down at the amphitheater, there'll be a costume contest, lots of vendors. Um, and we'll be showing a movie at 7, Ghostbusters, Afterlife. And we'll also have one of the stunt doubles from Stranger Things will be here um, doing a performance and signing some autographs. So it should be a really fun and exciting time. All righty. Thank you so much. You're we welcome. We appreciate you giving us a, an update. Any other questions from council? Do you have anything for me? Thank you, Ms. Hardaway. Um, and the last thing is I received in the mail uh, today uh, congratulations from the Department of Community Affairs, um, from the director, Lisa Weston, telling us um, that we were congratulating us on uh, coming to our service delivery compliance uh, verification. So they said congratulations to, um, for ourselves, the county, the city of Austell, and the city of Villarica. So they were congratulating us on uh, with the SDS. So that's all I had, and we'll move on then to updates from city staff, unless the council has anything. You all are tired. Okay, our city attorney, Mr. Joel Dotson. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you, sir. Staff attorney, Ms. Miranda Jordan. No business, Madam Mayor. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Ms. Miranda. Chief of Police, our Chief Dr. Gary Sparks. Yes, Madam Mayor, uh, this Saturday from 12 to 2 p.m., mm -hmm. I'll be at the D. Barber shop. Uh, we start an hour. Uh, chat with the chief mm -hmm. shop talks. So Where is the chief? Um, it's located off Chapel Hill Road in the uh, plaza there where the, the gym is located. located oh, Yogli Mowgli in Blue Agave? No, no, no. Not no. Cindy Cut. I mean, uh, not the Cut. Uh, one Life Fitness. It, it, one Life Fitness. One Life Fitness. Okay. Yeah. Right across from the um, Waffle House? Yes, sir. I don't really know, but I'm going to figure it out. From 12 to 2 <laughs> on Saturday. Yeah, 12 to 2. We'll be down there. And then we have our uh, fall yard sale. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be at the PD from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Okay. Uh, we got rain out on our last yard sale, mm -hmm. so all the people that paid their money to, to be a part of that, so we come back and we schedule another one for them. All right, so uh, that'll be uh, from 9 to 2 at the PD. And then yes, a town sir. hall meeting. November the 14th, mm -hmm. from 6.30 to 8.30. 6.30 to 8.30, okay. Thanks, yeah. Chief. You focusing on anything, getting ready for a, a fall, like you say, about shopping and all of that, or you just? Yeah, we, we, yes, ma'am. We, we getting gearing up for the, uh, for the holiday Being season. Safe. Yes. All right. Thank you so much, Chief. Our city manager, Ms. Marcia Hampton. Um, I don't have anything, but Ms. Jackson said that she has one announcement. Yes, ma'am. Chelsea Jackson, 6695 Church Street. I know you all said in the beginning that you embarrassed Miss Hampton enough um, regarding her 2023 Pillar of Excellence Award, so I came down to embarrass her one more time. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> what, what she didn't tell you all, or maybe she didn't know, is that in order to be, um, in order to win that award, you had to have at least two city managers in the state to nominate you. Marsha had nine city managers nominate wow. her for that award. From, from Union City to Canton to Bainbridge, they were calling me saying, hey, we want to endorse her, we want to nominate her. So um, to have at least nine or so of your peers nominate you for a great award, that's very commendable. Um, also, we have a special presentation video for Ms. Hampton, so I would like to invite Mary Council to come around and sit in the audience so we can play the video for her. <laughs> Look at her face. Look at the face. <laughs> oh, what you call, gotcha. Chief. No comments after this video, because I've seen it. <laughs> I'm just saying. Oh, yes. <laughs> when
When thinking about someone who deserves the GCCMA Pillar of Professional Excellence Award, the first name that comes to mind is Marsha Hampton. Marsha has been a pillar in the Douglasville community, starting with the city in 2003 as the Main Street Manager. Since then, she has held various other titles, such as Community and Downtown Services Director, Director of Conference Center Operations, and Assistant City Manager. In 2015, Ever the Trailblazer, Marsha became the first woman and African American to be appointed City Manager for the City of Douglasville, a position she still holds today. Throughout her 20 years of experience at the City of Douglasville, Marsha Hampton has demonstrated her commitment to the pillars of professional excellence set forth by the Georgia City County Management Association. Marsha has served on several boards and associations, championing professional local government management. We're that critical piece between elected leadership and our appointed and staff members who help to carry out the day-to-day -day operations of our local governments. She is the immediate past president of GCCMA, being the first African-American woman to serve as GCCMA president. Serves as a member of the Legislative Policy Council with the Georgia Municipal Association and also serves as chair of the Georgia Municipal Employees Benefit System Board of Trustees. She is a credential manager through the International City County Management Association and veteran of the United States Navy. As Douglasville City Manager, Marsha has been a supporter of young people entering into the public service sector by advocating for the ICMA Local Government Management Fellowship and Douglasville Internship Program. Marsha is really passionate about fostering the next generation of public servants. When I was the graduate fellow, she really encouraged me to get involved with organizations like GCCMA and ICMA. I'm really thankful for everything that I learned from Marsha when I was the graduate fellow and for everything that I continue to learn from her in my new role at the City of Douglasville. Marsha continues to think of innovative programs for her employees and citizens. If you know Marsha, you know once she has an idea, she's going to run with it. During one of our many meetings, we discussed the current state of the workforce, speaking of the Great Retirement Era as well as the Great Resignation Era. She wanted to create a pipeline for our current employees and be able to retain them in the city of Douglasville. This sparked the internal program of the Great Retention Series. The Great Retention Series at the City of Douglasville was created by Marcia to help develop talent currently working for the city. Five of the 11 mid-level managers who participated in the program have been promoted since graduating from the series. Marcia emphasizes ethics among her employees and holds herself and those who work for the city to the highest standard. When not devoting herself to public service, Marcia enjoys spending time with her three children and is a promoter for physical health and wellness. Even teaching HIT classes to Douglasville employees, Marsha exemplifies the characteristics of a servant leader. She has always been one to serve first while maintaining a focus on the growth and well-being of her employees and of the Douglasville community. We at the City of Douglasville wish to congratulate Marsha on her years of service, her many successes, and on winning the esteemed Pillar of Professional Excellence Award. Congratulations. 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 Some odd years that old people say, mm -hmm. and Greg's been here 
a long time. I remember when she came mm -hmm. to Douglasville, Me too. Bill, uh, the city of Douglasville, and, and, moved, and started moving on up. So that's why I was asking, who put this together? <laughs> <laughs> and that's me. I, I, I'm going to do an investigation. I know. Chief. I, I'm, I'm, I'm not we, going anywhere, Chief. I'm, I'm not going We told anywhere. the people Thank who could though. keep a secret. <laughs> Chief, I we told the people right. who could keep a secret. Yeah, I would keep a secret. But anyway, I stand a congratulations. I stand out. Thank you, Chief. Piece. I had the same question because they had some mayors there for their people, and I wasn't even told. I didn't know. So we just leave it alone. But anyway. Congratulations. But you know they say I can't keep a secret, but I work in secrecy. I know, that's right. How are they going to say that? What, what, what's up with that? And what? You know, I got investigations going on. Come on now. I'm from the CIA. I, I can keep a secret. But anyway, we'll saying. keep it on. Yeah, yeah, another video coming soon. Just Thank saying. you so much. Thank you, City Manager's <laughs> Department. So we'll move on to comments from citizens and delegates. If you sustained our lengthy meeting, we don't typically have meetings this long, but if you have sustained the meeting and you'd like to um, have any comments for myself and council members, we invite you to come to the podium. You have five minutes to talk to us about any business that is germane to the city of Douglasville. So please come forward, give us your name and address, and you can talk to myself and council members. No, everyone's just here to support. It's good to see you again, Mr. Osborne. Good to see you. Thank you for the foundation that you put into Ms. Hampton, those seeds of faith. We appreciate that. Oh, we have a, yes, ma'am. <laughs> the suspense, the suspense. Jill wait. Okay. All righty. Um, so we don't have any other comments for citizens and delegates. We can always have extend time to hear from our uh, public. All right. We don't have anything else. Without having said anything else, this meeting is adjourned. <laughs>